Can you not do this? This is weird. We must die so they do not live. All right, what do we got here? We got our aliens, we got our Carmageddon, uh... Oh, no, no Randy. Oh, here we go, something good. Oh, here's some weird and classic, let's do it. What's with all these first-person shooters? Oh, it tastes like vanilla kids, like plain toast, like missionary. Today it's about a classic, a true original. A game I can honestly say has never been copied. Not even that time that they made a sequel we don't talk about. Oh, who's my little puppy whoppy dingy doggy? Oh, uh, uh, doctor, uh, please, come on, unsecured line. MDK. What is MDK? Drugs. MDK is drugs. Developed by Shiny Entertainment, coming off of a claim from those Earthworm Jim games, they thought, yeah, let's make a game with huge 3D environments that can run on the software renderer on a low-end Pentium. Not even important. There's so much to talk about. MDK is such a strange and unique kind of game. A third-person shooter. Except it doesn't have weird camera problems like others of the time. Your character, Kurt Hectic, seen here in the skin-tightiest, most fetishistic battlesuit ever designed, is a janitor aboard Dr. Fluke Hawkins' space station, along with Max, or Bones, his mechanical forearm cigar-chomping dog, who I should mention, you cannot pet in this game. Not that I would, he looks ill-tempered, and judging by a thing that happens later, I wouldn't want to touch him. You'll find out. So you're all up in this space station, Dr. Hawkins is doing mad scientist stuff. Something about flange orbits, whatever those are. When Earth is attacked by an evil alien race called the Stream Riders. And it's up to Kurt to suit up and save the world as part of Mission Deliver Kindness. Yeah, MDK stands for Murder, Death, Kill, and that's cool, right? Could be a reference. MDK. Murder, death, kill, murder, death, kill. Could be something else. All I know is that this 20-year-old game was forbidden to refer to itself as Murder, Death, Kill, and I can't use that term in the title of this video because YouTube would probably demonetize it. I really wish that was a joke. Katie, you're off the hook. All the blood in this game's already green. The manual says that Kurt isn't really cool with all this killing, but it's fine. This armored suit comes with a chain gun that never runs out, and the helmet is a sniper rifle. Yeah, that weird shape, it's not for nothing. And this is the first game I ever played with some kind of sniper mechanic, and it works beautifully, even now. I mean, I'm using the Steam version, and mouse and keyboard seem to work just fine. I prefer not to snipe, but that's just me. The chain gun is simple enough. You can get a super chain gun that's more powerful, but has a limited ammo supply that goes away really, really fast. The sniper helmet has regular ammo, homing bullets, grenades, homing grenades, mortar, and occasionally you can call in an airstrike from Max, where his little dogfighter flies in and drops its teeth and... It's gonna be hard to describe what happens in this game sometimes. And just look at this, if I hadn't played this game a ton before, I'd have no idea what was going on because most of this shit I've told you comes from the manual. It's taken me a long time to talk about what's fairly simple in the game, because everything that isn't your standard running and shooting is wild and inventive. The game starts with the doc telling you that there's a mind crawler headed straight for Laguna Beach, California. Now, if you've never played this, you should, it's awesome. You might be caught off guard by how each level starts. You have to jump from the space station and enter Earth's atmosphere before landing on the mine crawler, all while the aliens' defenses are trying to track you and shoot you down. With all of this shit, what is this? These are items on parachutes, which are also being dropped from the space station, as in this game explains where your pickups come from. That's never really been necessary, but it's cool. Once you've broken through the atmosphere, you scream as you plummet to your death. Well, no, actually, because you have a parachute, you survive this. When you jump and hold down the button or double tap, the parachute opens and activates, and you can just kind of glide around. Again, a completely harebrained idea that is awesome in practice. Your character is 2D now instead of 3D, like in the opening of the level. I assume for performance reasons, because the 3D environments in this game are huge. Not always the most detailed, it's all in the art style, which is, well, alien-like textured tech stuff and solid colors. I actually really like it sometimes, except when...
I have no idea what's going on here. And this was another one of those I have to install a fan-made patch to get it to run properly kind of games. Here's how it looked when I launched it from Steam with a clean install. Anyway, you're in the first level. You turn around. This is the I Feel Top power-up, which gives you 150 health and can be found in levels and at the end of stages. We're not there yet. This thing runs from you is clearly a human invention from Dr. Hawkins, and it runs away from you in terror, meaning that Dr. Hawkins made a power-up for his mobile armor suit that is sentient and afraid to die. And the sound when you pick up health items in this game? This is a self-aware health pickup, and you just fucking devour it. Like, what the fuck, Doc? Oh yeah, and they didn't texture the side of it properly. <laughs> the way this game is stretched is because of the Steam version, and because the game itself was at a different aspect ratio when it came out, like it projects in 4x3, but my best estimation is that this is a 5x3 aspect ratio, which is weird as fuck. Here's it adjusted for 16x9, it's fine, you're missing a little of the top, but I'm not... It's fine. So you're just playing and you walk out into this. Look at it, it's beautiful, just, oh, the visuals in this game. While abstract and strange are some of the very best 1997 had to offer. The sharp, angular, polygonal look of everything isn't just because of the technological limitations. Okay, maybe it is, but they learned to lean into it hard and nail down a cool art style. Listen to some of this music here too, it's great. The soundtrack's by a man named Tommy Tallarico, and it is spectacular. What? What do you want? We have awakened. Oh, hey, that's cool. Are those tribal? Those are some sick tats, bro. You want to grab some natty ice and watch some BBT? For your own self-serving actions, you have allowed us, the invincible darkness, the black storm, the obsidian plague, to take root in your weak, pitiful dimension. Is this going to be a thing? Because I don't care. We will use your vessels to reclaim this world and all other worlds. You should really talk to the administrator about this. He can probably help you more with that. I'm on a schedule. I gotta start doing one of these videos a day or else they're never gonna let me go to E3. E3 will be enveloped in our impenetrable darkness. Oh, you're from EA. <laughs> so the heads up display here. The heads up display here, there's a green circle around where your health is. That's the population of the area currently being mined by the aliens. And if it runs out, you fail the mission. I would show you that, but it's never happened to me. You still get to go to the next level, it's just that everybody's dead. Or, as the doc puts it in the manual, The longer you take to complete your mission, the more people will die. Take too long and there's not going to be any ladies left for you to park with. But hey, no pressure, huh? Park with? Oh, you sly old devil. We all know you're talking about having an intellectual discourse with a comely young thing in the back of a Cadillac and then peeing all over to prove your theory that human urine is a female deterrent, which it is, for the most part. So in the first room, you shoot up some aliens that get dropped in. It's as good a time as any to talk about the power-ups. This is the world's smallest nuclear explosion. I guess it's more of a key than a power-up. You destroy locks on doors with this one. Grenades are exactly what you'd expect. Very useful. If you're standing, you have to wait for an animation, but if you're flying, you just spit them out. A dummy decoy that distracts enemies because they're not very bright. In later stages, you get a hammer that... Yeah. And some kind of energy tornado that... Good stuff. The first level teaches you everything you ever needed to know about sniping in this game and more. You get mortar and have to break through some walls with it. You can headshot. These aliens are mocking you, holding targets, wanting you to kill them. Okay, kids, let's deliver some fucking kindness. 
Now, MDK on the whole is a fairly easy game. Fun as hell, mostly, but easy. This is a third-person shooter where you can glide around. The chain gun auto-aims because you don't really have vertical aiming unless you're in sniper mode. And you can circle strafe. Regular strafing makes Kurt do this. It looks so weird. The movement is so smooth. Running, gliding, shooting, everything is right. The 2D animated player sprite is beautiful, too, and very responsive to you. Look at that ass, how toned it is. That's janitor ass. That's an ass you get from hard mopping. Another thing making the game easy is the fact that all the enemies fire projectiles that can be dodged fairly easily, unless you're forced into sniper mode for something where you can't move. But when one hits you, the big blue ones especially, they'll knock you down. Same with explosions. The first level is a great introduction. It's all out war against these aliens. They have these pods that'll infinitely spawn soldiers. They got tanks, airships, kamikazes, it's crazy. And then there's these little touches at each level, stuff you aren't expecting, but then the game just gives you a nice little gift. For some reason, you can shoot this console, and then... It's a trick that the game only pulls twice, like, the game has stuff like that up its sleeve and pulls these mechanics out every now and then. One level has you losing through tunnels, another has you air surfing, and none of these things appear too much to overstay their welcome, mostly because the game is only three hours long. Yes, that sucks, but not a second of it is wasted. My favorite part comes in the very first level with a one-time item that's a joke. They made a model, they programmed the AI to do this specific thing in this one room, in this one level, for this joke. And it works, I love it. Yeah, I mentioned how this game is only about three hours long. There's six stages, five of you dropping onto mine crawlers that are mostly invading Europe, and the last one has you head into what I think is the alien homeworld, chasing after the boss because he kidnapped Max. He doesn't kill him, he just ties him up. For reasons. I'm really not trying to play up the fetishistic overtones of this game that stars a man in a gimp suit. First, we need to talk about how the game operates. It's a linear game, arenas connected by hallways, every arena usually being something different. For example, in level 2, there's this huge area with one tough alien and a wrecking ball. Sure. At the end of each of these stages is a boss, the first one you get to snipe, and... Oh man, that's not a good idea, carrying explosives and soldiers next to each other. I don't think these guys have ever invaded a planet before. Other bosses have different ways of fighting you. This little guy keeps releasing more aliens, seemingly not knowing that I can just dodge their fire and never ever let go of the trigger myself. And did he just drop a martini glass? One of the great things about this game, it's the little details. You'll spend a lot of time flying and shooting, and my only complaint about the shooting is that it gets kind of repetitive because the base damage on your chain gun isn't that high. The designers seem to understand this, and in one of the final areas, you're resupplied with a super chain gun practically the whole time. This air surfing thing plays out like a minigame by itself. A little stiff sometimes, in my opinion. You shoot, you can jump, collect the bones for a power-up. It's arcadey, it's fun. There's like James Bond music playing during it. That is absurd. James Bond never surfed. Ah, oh, damn it. The designers wanted to make something crazy and fun. Maybe this is the natural evolution to 3D from Earthworm Jim instead of Earthworm Jim 3D, which I never- Wait, what? 
What? Hey, Rockstar Games, are you still offering the free pager with Earthworm Jim 3D? I'm interested in this. So how could this fucking insane game end? Max is captured, you have to nuke the tethers holding him because they're really, really strong. He escapes, and you feed him to the boss, and then... Yeah, that's why we don't pet him. You escape in his jet, this one here, even though you are on a different planet, God knows how far away from where you started, the game will tell you just as soon as it's, nah, it's music video time. It looks like the beginning, right? I've never been more confused by an ending in a video game than this. This. I can't play the song for you. I found the MTK ending on YouTube and the bots will claim it. Now nah, that's fine. I used to have a job where I'd describe music to the deaf. It's simple. Let me let you in on a little secret. I understand some French. Just not while it's being spoken this quickly by a pixie-cut 90s pop singer at the end of a game that was entirely in English up to this point. So what the fuck is this song? What does it mean? Well, this is sung by BZK, an abbreviation adopted by Natalie Kazan after the band Billy Z Kick broke up, and the song is called no, 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 Which translates roughly to No, Nothing's Changed, and this is a song written about the Vietnam War. Let me just like, let me show you some of the lyrics, because if I play the song it's gonna get claimed. This is Future Civvy. The video does get claimed. Other stuff happens too, but it's not important. I'm just gonna play some other music. That's fitting. Wait, no, that's insane. What the fuck is happening? What the fuck does any of this have to do with Vietnam? Now it's time for the top five things in MDK that made me go WTF. What the fuck? What the fuck? Number three. Oh, what the fuck? Number two. It seems that this infection only attacks one part of the brain. What the fuck? Number one. Oh, what the fuck? 